This series is the story of the new amphibious Arctic vehicle project named Bernard. Building on ideas, skills and questions raised during the Allen lifeboat conversion, as a team we will share all those moments needed to get Bernard up north, onto the ice and making himself useful. In the episode before last, I simply refused to let you wonderful bunch witness my triumph of cutting edge hydro infrastructure. I'm a merciful sort and so here's proof that it works. Water for hands, for the rinsing of, all free of charge due to English rainfall, which enters the bin via this hole. Hello all the way down there. Uh, you'll see that I've made some good progress on skinning. Uh, the polypropylenes are going in nicely. I'm putting in quite a few more securing screws than I thought because I just want to make sure that it's following the form properly. And I've also got this much more flexible uh, HDPE um, polyethylene which is going to go over the tighter radiuses and that's going on here. Although this one needs to come off because the uh, company who I bought them from who was supposed to do the cuts for me uh, they did all the cuts uh, askew and so I'm gonna have to unscrew this one take it off because I only noticed when I realized everything was at the wrong angle and I thought have I made the mistake is the whole mold at a weird angle and then I checked it with us with a square and no the answer is this has been cut really badly and so I had to shout at them and get them to send me a new one which took a few days and that's delayed me anyway in the meantime um, I'm just going to show you quickly how I've been doing uh, the foam work on the on the sort of the the vertical sections because although squirty foam even a really high quality squirty foam does tend to be quite good at adhering to whatever you squirt it onto it's not a miracle worker and if you are doing areas which are actually quite large the weight of it as it starts to expand can sometimes droop and, and fall and fall off onto the ground which is obviously a pain in the behind so um, I have found a solution for yeah angles that are sort of anything more vertical than this I use a piece of scrap cardboard and I basically paint the cardboard with foam, let it puff up just for a couple of minutes whilst it's still very sticky and adhesive and then I plonk it onto the vertical bit, let it cure, then I rip the cardboard off and then if there are any things I need to fill in, any, any voids or any gaps or whatever, I then get another, another can and just go over and, and sort it out. So normally in one, two, maybe three iterations you go from uh, a completely empty void to an area of foam that can then be shaped and finished. Right, I'll carry on doing that. See how this revolutionary eco-friendly technique works. The cardboard even comes from the packaging the skinning plastic came packed in. Also, the slight compression helps improve the quality of the foam. Less expansion means more cell density and so less squishiness. The cardboard peels off rather well and then you have a foam surface to cut, slice, grind, sand and shape until your expansive needs are met. There were lots of other little surface voids and so on across the two types of expanding foam left to fill and although this whole void fill plan of mine was pretty cost effective and quick I do wonder whether I should have just bought thick sheets of pre-cured modelling polyurethane foam. The sale price just offended me so this is what we ended up with instead. I also did this which got rid of all those silly lumps and bumps. Quick and efficient work that's not at all indicative of how I found the last month of work to be. Also I've been grumpy about these polypropylene skinning sheets. The curved ones are fine as they can't go wavy, but the flat, not quite vertical sides are misbehaving. See? Hmm. At least those tightly radius top sections, or rather bottom sections, look great. Or at least the thicker, stiffer polypropylene ones do. I'd initially been concerned they'd not manage that tight curve. But look at us, concentrating on the main body of the mould and the front end. We've neglected the most challenging shape we actually have going on. What would be the transom if this were a boat? Which is not. It's Bernard. But then the same story after all that. An initial slice with an enormous kitchen knife, then shaping with a mini grinder and an orbital sander. This is the sort of gap we are filling and shaping. A surface needs a release angle to work in a composites layup. Fully vertical is good for a transom, but extreme radiuses are a pain in the Bernard for laying up fabrics, so I'm being a moderate, which does not come naturally. Okay, enough of that, and now for large pots of special powders. These are used to fill out and change the properties of resins. Aluminium trihydroxide, because one hydroxide is never enough, and fumed silica. Now the same lineup, as I recorded the clip twice and I'd forgotten about the first one. But also a glimpse at today we're using polyester resin and the MEKP catalyst you need to add in order to kickstart all those juicy polymerization reactions. Although you don't need to be percentage point accurate with the mixes with polyester resin, as you would for epoxy, I still use a weighing scale. 
To make a strong filler with this out of date resin I don't want to waste, we add the two powders and some grey pigments so the resin isn't clear and we can see where we've been. The Ali powder, which reduces shrinkage, and polyester is susceptible to shrinkage, mixes in fine but the hyper light silica takes more care and slow stirring. You end up with a paste and add more silica to get the thickness you're after. An electric mixing setup would speed up the process of getting rid of those stubborn lumps. This thickness will be fine if you're pouring into a low area and want it to self-level, or to paint a thin coating, but for this iteration I want my resin to grab onto some angled surfaces of the mould, so more silica. If you add too much, you add more resin. Easy. And the clock has not started yet on the curing, there's no catalyst added yet, but now there is. It's a hot day and the pot volume is large, so to avoid the resin kicking into an exothermic explosion before I can use it, I'm using only 1% of summer grade MEKP catalyst. More mixing, and by the way this is not much cheaper than buying ready made filler by the 5 litre tub. I just don't like wasting resin, and this can't be used for layups as it's old. I also get to alter the consistency for each batch. I experimented with putting the powders into the mixing pot first and then adding the resin to see if I could smother the fluffy silica that wants to float away into the sky. It was worth a go but the resin just passes straight through it and the silica still needs to be stirred slowly at first to stop it escaping. This is what it would look like without the pigment, a purpley shade that more or less goes to nothing once spread out on a surface. Not forgetting the alley powder, it adds density but the main purpose is to stop the resin cracking or distorting after curing due to shrinkage. This probably isn't the most efficient use of my time, but anyhow, we're doing it. And pigments added now to turn that purple into a much more joyful shade. It really is important to A, keep the catalyst at the minimal level that will still be sufficient to kickstart the chemical reaction, and B, to not mix up more than you can apply in five minutes or so. Otherwise, in this heat, I'll end up with a red hot pot of furious curing resin. That's a little bit warm for me, I have to say. We'll see whether having this open makes a big difference. Should cool down a bit and it will mean that the resin certainly is going to go off super quick. And it did. These batch sizes were about right, and as I mentioned I did some rather runny and able to be spatulas out onto a smooth surface. Others needed to be thicker to be spread out on the sides. I actually found gloved fingers were rather better in some areas to quickly and smoothly apply. Real proper purpose mix fillers will contain a wider range of, and more, fillers than I've done here. This is pretty resin rich. As a base surface covering and not the final fairing, this is fine. It will be slow to sand, but will have a lot more strength and integrity than bodywork filler. I like this as it will support the foam below which would otherwise be susceptible to damage. Again, not forgetting the other end of Bernard. Nice job if I say so myself, which I can as it's my channel and I write the script. Only a morning's work and yes, I did not forget that little section around the lower edge. It was the first batch I did before thinking of using grey pigment. The surface isn't perfect or even close to be serviceable for us, but we're not at the final stage yet. Oh, has it got any cooler? Uh, four degrees cooler. And quite a bit more humid. This is um, one example of how I'm getting, not frustrated, but just having to do a little bit of extra work every now and again. I've done a, a tick here to show that I was happy with this panel, having got this entire thing flat. But then I noticed I came back a few days after I did the work and there's now a little bit of movement just there so I need to put a screw in there and probably a screw in there. So I don't know whether it's temperature, um, it's pretty hot in here um, and it will be fluctuating day and night but I just need to keep an eye on that because if I think it's flat and then I come back a few days later and it's not and we think right now it's time to use the mould, we have a problem. Um, that said, if it's bowing outwards, it's not so much of a problem because there'll be pressure from the outside pressing in. It's actually more of an issue if I find areas where it's starting to bow inwards, but I haven't actually found any of those. Anyhow, uh, I committed to this polypropylene plan a long time ago. It, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it's just not perfect. Maybe in hindsight, yeah, I would have gone for thicker polypropylene or... I don't think I ever would have skinned the whole thing in, um, in resin because getting that perfectly flat down here would be... A real a real problem so i think this was the right solution but um there's just been more uh preparation work than i was expecting anyway we'll get it done by done i mean deploying the grinder this is to take off any high points or areas i can see that are totally out of shape i'm still of course using the mdf former guides within there to make sure the nose remains symmetrical and true it's quite dusty in here my entire body has changed color Anyway, we're making progress. That's gonna be the hardest area for access. By access, I mean reaching over. 
and I uh, forgot my ear defenders um, and so I've stuffed kitchen roll into my ears and then taped over it. It's actually quite effective. Right, more of this. Indeed, lots more flat wheeling extravagance with the angle grinder. This I purport is truly artistic and nuanced work. Go in too hard and I will end up with dips or even holes that I'll need to refill. This was done with majestic success and we were all glad and in awe. I did end up like I'd fallen into a Colombian export silo though. I need to buy a giant vacuum cleaner that I can climb inside and switch on. Until such a day, I do need to make do with the end of a broom. Completely clean and undusty, which was most certainly not the next day, we're at the next filling stage. I'm pretty happy with how the main layer of polyester resin filler has got on. That's got the thickener and also the anti-shrinkage filler in it. But of course, that's going to be much, much harder to sand. I've mostly ground that to roughly the, same, the right shape. And now I'm going to use this much um, lighter, uh, easy sand filler, which is already ready made. I'm going to use that now to do most of the final shaping. And then we'll have the no section done. That's the most complicated part of the mold. This was unsurprisingly a much quicker setup as some kind chap or chapess had pre-mixed this in a large factory. That said, the shops didn't have much stock and I needed to visit three in order to get just two tubs. You simply need to activate the polyester resin hiding somewhere in the filler there with catalyst. It's not MEKP this time, but BPO paste. Stir lots and quickly over to the tent as the 20 minute working time is very optimistic in this heat and apply. I'm trying to spread carefully to offer a smooth surface, only filling the indents and low areas, and so minimizing sanding later on and product wastage, but there's only so much you can do. It's amazing how a part can transform once all visually one uniform shade. Aside from looking merely smarter, it's also a lot easier to spot problem areas where the surface or shape is wrong. Your eyes are no longer being distracted by the patchwork of colors. The next day, and that wasn't even the zenith of roasting hotness. It's quite warm in here and we've had a slight problem in that I need to squirt out a load of this extra hardener because for some reason in some sections, uh, only in some small areas, this, this, all, this area is all alright. It's that zone there and kind of this zone here. For some reason it's not fully hardened and I thought I'd been really careful mixing up the hardener, the catalyst, but apparently not. I've never had that problem with uh, filler before. Anyway, I'm just going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to paint uh, catalyst all over the areas which I don't think have um, cured that well and we'll see if that works. If it doesn't, I'm gonna to have to chip off some areas and refill it, and I really don't need that because I wanna to finish today. It's a little bit after nine, and the reason why it's still light is because uh, it's the longest day of the year. The sun's actually, I think, just still up. Anyway, uh, behind me, in fact, in front of me, you can see there is a mold. The mold's not done. Um, the plan was for me this is Saturday to get the final bit of footage of me completing the mold, and I could do it all in one neat episode. On the, on the Sunday, which is the day that hopefully you'll be seeing this. Or uh, if you're slightly behind the curve, Monday or Tuesday. We don't allow people to watch things months afterwards. You should be ahead of the curve, not behind it. Anyway, um, I really, really wanted to have this done because we're already three or four weeks behind. I've had a load of little sort of mini setbacks and uh, delivery delays and so on, but this mold has to be done properly. I don't want to rush it and get it wrong. And I had two big draw packs today. Uh, First of all, it was about, I think it got up to 42 degrees in here uh, this afternoon, even though this is, you know, white and so it's supposed to reflect a fair, fair amount of heat. Anyway, it's cooled down a little bit now. I think it's still, it's still nearly 30 degrees in here uh, and it's quite late, but it meant that A, working was quite hard, but B, for some reason, and normally heat is a good thing when you're trying to uh, have resin cure and filler cure, uh, basically a whole section of the filler that I was putting over. This is like the easy sand filler that I was putting in there to try and get the final shape. It just didn't cure from when I put it, uh, from when I applied it a couple of days ago. And all I can put it down to is that I had two tubs and I think I can identify the area that I did one tub with has done a sterling job and then the other tub hasn't. I um, Unfortunately, I've thrown the tub away. It, it might have been out of date and I didn't check. Anyway, I'm pretty pissed off about that because I had to basically scrape away a lot of it and then refill and that's taken time to redo. And so I haven't had time to do all the sanding work that I needed to do to finish. Um, so it's chucked me back and in. Uh, this won't be done tonight. It won't be done tomorrow because I need to let all this cure properly before sanding. Uh, I've also come across another problem and it, I always realized that I was slightly chasing my tail when it came to affixing these 
polypropylene sides and that I screwed down in the areas they needed to be screwed down so that it's nice and flat and it, uh, that's flat on the sides and then curved on the top but I noticed that every, every time I came back it had kind of shifted a little bit and some areas slightly bubbled where they weren't before so I put an extra screw in and everything looked fine and then I came back and the same thing happened again there's obviously quite a big temperature swing going on inside here and I know that obviously plastics and wood um, behave slightly differently in the heat. And it appears that basically I'm getting, it's, it's not warping, but you know, pla the, the, the plastic, if it's under a little bit of um, either tension or more likely if it's under a little bit of compression, will start to bow and sort of bulge out slightly. Uh, it's not particularly bad on the polypropylene and I've managed to stabilize it and now these sections here are fixed. It's working fine. They will be perfectly good as a mold and polypropylene is a great mold release uh, plastic. Uh, this, this curve here is actually polypropylene. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to get it go, to go around that radius. And so actually on the first one I did over there, I used HDPE, which tends to conform a little bit better to curves the HDPE, and I'll just zoom over this side because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, that is perfectly flat, that's polypropylene. If you run your eye along that, it is literally perfect. That's great work. Uh, here, you can probably see there are little undulations going all the way along. Uh, that's a problem. And so luckily, because actually the plastic manufacturer messed up one of my orders, I do have a bit of spare polypropylene. So these, <laughs> I thought I was done with this. Um, these I've just unscrewed, they're coming off. I will use those as a template to cut the same shape out of the polypropylene sheet. So this HDP will just put on scrap. And then I will try and put the whole thing back on the same as the one the other side. And it won't have that undulation, I'm hoping. Anyway, I, I've had to redo a few things on this mold, but we will uh, get completion. I am going to post the video today because um, I just want to, I just want to post it and get it online for you, and I will then do like a uh, post completion one where I finished all of this final filling, and then there will be one layer of glass fiber that goes over it to kind of seal it and give it a nice um, uh, a, a nice surface, uh, and also to waterproof it and so on, and then I can sweep, clean, and then I'm gonna have to sweep and clean <laughs> everything inside here, everything's covered in dust. Uh, and then we'll have a mold. Right, this thing never ends. Cheers guys. Oh, look at the wrong bit of the phone. There's the camera. Cheers guys, bye. People of the channel, as the infernal sun sets once more, Bernard's mold remains only just incomplete, but we shall prevail, won't we? Bye.